What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals coming soon and a bunch of other stuff at DL2 Trading and one other uh, website here. Uh, I'm going to link everything down in the description so you guys can take a look at all this stuff if you want. You don't have to sit here and hang out with me, but I do have a lot to say about some of the stuff that has currently dropped or recently dropped at DLT Trading. There's a bunch of cool stuff. Um, so if you want to do that, links down in the description um, to check it out if you want to, or you can hang out with me and hear my commentary. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So what has dropped? I think one of the first things I want to highlight here is the Riot T1000 V2 which has some interesting new variations. Uh, the Zirconium access, uh, Accents, this one in particular, um, is pretty cool if we can actually get my browser to load. There we go. Uh, so this is the Riot T1000. It is absolutely not a typical titanium frame lock. I own the V1 of this knife. Um, it is absolutely gigantic. So first and foremost, if you are not into absolutely hulking gigantic knives, this is not going to be for you. If you are though, this one is definitely one of the more impressive ones. Nine inches, roughly. Three and a half inch blade, a little more than that because it's got a forward choil. Um, but nearly a quarter inch slab of legitimately properly heat treated M390. That's cool, but also the sliding secondary lock on the back, this piece right there which I can't properly highlight. There we go. It's actually a little spring-loaded piece and uh, these uh, little tabs right here, you can push in for a secondary, they're like secondary stops on the inside, making the locking system very, very substantial. Uh, but uh, the way that you uh, disengage those is by pushing this forward and it pops those out. I call it a Frankenstein lock because it looks like the bolts that come out of Frankenstein's neck. You also have two absolutely massive secondary uh, stops up here, which are also, I believe, usable studs. Uh, yeah, you can see them in this closed position. Um, just absolutely hulking, massive thing. Um, not necessarily more practical than like a fixed blade. Like obviously if you're gonna abuse a knife, use a fixed blade, but this is gonna appeal to specific knife enthusiasts that go after like weird, almost um, like, like it's so overdeveloped and overdesigned that it's actually inconvenient, kind of, right? I have the V1 and I absolutely love this thing. It is ridiculous, it is so overkill, over the top, but man, is it fun to flip and it's so fun to disengage those little, uh, uh, those little um, Frankenstein pins or whatever, but definitely the most interesting one. This is the one that I literally just bought. Uh, well, actually, I bought the crystal tie version, but this is true DLC, and the blade should actually end up being a satin DLC. Yep, right there. That means it's going to be a shiny DLC. Now, that's a lot of money, and a lot of people are going to reduce it to titanium and M390. Yeah, there's probably two and a half titanium and M390 knives within this. So if you are reducing it to just the materials, you're going to have to acknowledge exactly how much of the, those materials are going into this Riot produced knife with a proprietary secondary locking system. Uh, pretty substantial. So uh, I just wanted to point that out there. It is very cool, but it is definitely not for everyone. Um, so that is available. Another one, I'm actually going to go to a totally different website here real quick to point this out because Kuhn will release the Compadre, which is a knife that many of you have been asking for. The Padre is arguably their most uh, popular knife, uh, and it is absolutely fantastic. This is another company who um, does an excellent job in terms of overall fit and finish and execution. They're also using incredible materials like Vanax, which is the case here, and properly heat treating it. They're also doing a shiny DLC. Everybody uh, you know who has picked up their Padre for the most part, I believe has absolutely loved it. I have a couple of these, they're awesome. Um, this new Compadre is a smaller one, a smaller uh, Padre, still utilizing Vanax at 60 to 62, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, essentially, you're looking at um, a knife overall length, roughly the same size as the um, Spyderco PM2. Uh, so if you love the lines of the Padre, it's just a little too big for you. This is a, I said PM2, Para 3. It's roughly about the same size as the Para 3. Um, and uh, that's going to be a winner for a lot of people. Uh, the reason it is so expensive is because it is Vanax. That is, th that's one of those steels where that steel really does cost substantially more than something like M390 or 
S forty five VN or whatever L Max, right? Which they they use L Max, um, but Van X is just an incredibly expensive uh, composition, incredibly corrosion resistant, unbelievably corrosion resistant, uh, good edge retention and very easy to touch up. So this is kind of a dream steel to use on a knife. For a lot of people, this is going to be a one and done EDC knife. Uh, they do have, no, the s Tau 2s are sold out. No surprise there. That might be one of the most impressive knives they've ever um, created in just in terms of machining complexity. Uh, but they also have the full size uh, 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 Padre, right? So if you want the full size one in the DLC or you want the full size one in the satin, they are available. And they have a few of the X Padres with um, their crossbar lock also available. It's important to point out that these are actually in L Max and not Van X. With L Max, you'll actually get better edge retention. Um, it just won't be quite as stainless. Um, but still 60 to 62 there, which is an excellent heat treat. If you've never checked out the Padre, I'm sorry, the <laughs> the Padre website, the Kunwu website. It is absolutely worth worth checking out. They make some of the best dollar for dollar premium production knives on earth. Uh, absolutely, it's also worth checking out their uh, Kickstarter for their new mirror polish DLC watch with a Timascus uh, bezel. I have this watch. You will be seeing it on the channel very very soon. It is excellent. Uh, worth checking this out. Now let's go back to um, the new arrivals page on DLT Trading and see what we've got here. Have they changed the blade steel on the Godfather yet? No, they haven't. Please, Protec. I'll buy another one of these as soon as you change the blade steel. Uh, Protec Strider PTs, these are really cool. Um, please bring back the full size. Like, what? where is the full size? These 7-inch ones, fine. Yeah, cool, they're in Magna Cut. I mean, that's cool. Uh, bring back the full size ones. They, like, I don't want to speak for everybody, but you guys know that those, like, they they could make probably three times as many as they have with the PT, and they would probably sell in a heartbeat. The full-size SNG Auto from Protec is one of the coolest knives that they have ever made. Um, I gave mine, I had a titanium one, and I gave it to a buddy um, at, on his wedding day, so... Hope he's enjoying it. I really miss it. We have a Protec Malibu Reverse Tanto. Those are also in MagnaCut. I'm pretty sure Protec, somebody told me Protec's uh, heat treat protocol for MagnaCut was very good. Um, I believe it. Uh, Riot XO Minis and 3V, if you want those. There was a huge Microtech drop here. Uh, the Frag uh, MSIs, those are G10. Combat Troodon with the Interceptor Blade is super cool. Um, these are, a lot of people always ask, is it M390 or M390 MK? I can't quite see. That says M390 MK. Uh, I really would like to know if they have made any effort to bring the heat treat up on M390 MK. Something tells me they haven't. It. It's too bad. Um, if we're going by, you know, what a lot of the community test results have been. I like Microtech knives, and obviously, if you guys pick these up, I make money off of them. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, you know, what I've heard from, you know, <laughs> like when when members of the community have uh, tested their M390 MK, like it, it comes back really low. So I really hope Microtech is paying attention to this and plans to alter that because um, not super great. Now, they're M390 and I know they used to use LMAX. I think they almost exclusively use just M390 and M390MK now. Um, I don't know if their M390 is normally heat treated harder. It would not surprise me at all if they were hitting the same industry standard as everybody else, which is 5961, which I would consider personally to be just mediocre. But um, there are a ton of Microtechs here and also uh, some hinders left. It does not surprise me that the three inches are hanging out. Then again, you guys have to remember when DLT orders a drop of hinders, like orders a group of hinder knives, I bet they order more hinder knives than anybody else on the internet. I bet that they have the largest batches. These are three inch Harpoon Tantos. That's okay. Personally, I'm glad they're an S45VN. I think that's the steel that hinder does the best with. Uh, I believe the last time I saw what they were hitting these at is like 5961, which is actually appropriate as far as I know, for um, S45VN. 
Uh, they're also releasing their XM24s, this batch, in... Um, uh, oh, these are hologrammed. Oh, I did not realize that. Ooh, the new ones with the H. Ooh, ooh, cool. This one right here is probably the coolest one they've got. This is a hologrammed XM24. Still at 185 thousandths, but that edge should be much thinner. So you still get that full beefy XM24 vibe, but with a much thinner cutting edge, which is very cool. Uh, considering their S45VN is not only the most appropriate blade steel for this geometry, um, but probably the best blade steel that they utilize and work with, um, that's actually pretty awesome. So if you've ever wanted to pick up an XM24, but have been concerned that the slicing performance will not be up to par, outside of the skinny variants, if they ever do a skinny hologram, version of this, which they've done skinnies in the past, they've just been flat ground. This is probably the most performance oriented XM24 that they, they, they have ever made. If you are new and you're looking at that price tag and you're like, oh my golly gee willikers, uh, the price of pocket knives sure has uh, gotten out of control here recently. XM24s have always been this price. I mean, the last time they were less was over 10 years ago. Um, these are all in-house, 100% in-house USA made products. And while that price is a little bit, it's always felt a little bit high, they've not budged on that price. Like that's just been where, where they've been at. Uh, same thing with these uh, auto eclipses. These are really cool, full tie. Uh, I have a buddy who tells me that the firing power of the eclipses is, is off the charts. This same buddy is the buddy who sold me my standard XM18 three and a half inch auto. And I'm not upset with the firing power of that one. So if this one is, is uh, you know, even more powerful, that's pretty cool. It looks like that might be the only one that's left though. They also have large 31s here. Um, these large 31s, here's an example of something that has gone up um, in price. The large Sabenza 31, I think, has always hovered right around 425 and to 450. Now, understandably, they have been utilizing MagnaCut lately, and that will definitely bump the price because that's a more expensive, um, that's definitely a more expensive uh, composition than what they've used in the past, which has been S35VN and then at some point S45VN, right? Um, so wowzers, that is very, that's very much up there. Um, but it is full titanium over the XM18 uh, and 24s, uh, you know, titanium with titanium liner and G10 scale. Of course, the XM24, if we're going to compare properly, is an absolutely massive knife uh, compared to the Sabenza. So a lot of it is really just preference. It's the same thing it's always been. I don't really care about the Medford Infraction. I don't really think that that's a very good looking knife. The Medford Antic looks interesting. Um, or how big are these? Uh, I've, I've talked about this knife or I've just, I've brought up that it seems like an interesting knife in the past. Yeah, okay, it's eight inches or so. Kind of neat. Uh, some fixed blades there. Vehement, interesting. Not, not, you know, okay. Uh, they have some, uh, the Quantum Ursus, no, no surprise that the Quantum Ursus with the G10 show side scales are the ones left over. If you're gonna pick one of these up at this price, pick up the ones in full tie. Uh, these ones with the G10 front scale, I will never understand how Shurigaroff justifies that $600 price tag. They should be way back from that. There's no way that that makes any sense. Griffin X series, that looks like a fixed blade, surely, surely. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I thought maybe there was a chance. Of that little thing there on the <laughs> that little opening hole there, it just threw me. All right. We have the Benchmade 593 BK PSK gray and OD green G10. All right. 8.4 inches. It's a big boy. It's in Magna Cut and it's G10. Why? How? Yeah. Okay. Interesting knife. Not for 360 bucks though. I mean, you're just not in that territory. McNeese mock like a lot of people say, how can you say that? Like you're going to you're going to like praise the American made XM24 at close to double the price. These aren't the same. The, like the processes involved with making them are not the same uh, at all. Uh, the 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 hinder knives um you know for people who want to make that argument number one hinder knives is a much smaller company it's a much more in-house focused company 
uh, they're utilizing titanium, uh, and there's a lot more machine work involved. Those are much more complex processes with much higher costs of manufacturing. That is true, right? So uh, companies like uh, Gerber USA, Hogue USA, Spyderco USA, uh, Buck USA, Benchmade USA, those are not on the same plane as Demco USA, Strider USA, Medford USA, Hinder USA, Les George USA, Chris Reeve USA. Not on the same plane of existence. That would not be comparing apples to apples. Uh, same with the McNeese PM Mach 2. Uh, you're talking about like mid-tech, like ultra, ultra high-end production slash mid-tech, right? Uh, that's what you're looking at. In a lot of cases, these knives are hand assembled. That is so cool right there. The Hinder Eclipse Harpoon Spanto is this one left over because it's red and blue. That's why. Yeah, I understand that. A little bit of an awkward color combination. I mean, I'm from Kansas, so those are Jayhawk colors, right? Uh, but the red and blue ones is a little bit weird on a knife. Um, but that is that is a really cool, like the Harpoon Spanto on the Eclipse. That's one of the coolest looking Eclipses. It makes me think of the ZT0393, I think. Yeah. Lefty, small and cosies. Vanguard Atomic is definitely a cool looking knife. I wish it was a little bit less expensive, but it's definitely a cool looking knife. Tons of Olamic Whippersnapper still hanging out. Uh, look at that green one. Ooh, is that SeaTech? Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. Oh, man. That brings me back. SeaTech. CTS XHP. What a wicked knife. If you know, you know. God dang, that's an awesome knife. Love that. Look at this. What do we got here? Oh, absolutely beautiful. So cool. I love this stuff. Blue Raffir Sparkle. What the heck? Absolutely wild. Almost glowing. Wonderful. Masterful. Alamic cutlery. Especially with the uh, uh, whippersnappers. Super underrated right now. Just a forgotten gem of the knife world, it seems like. Um, expensive, though, understandably. Some Herman Stings here. Um, we actually have a Damasteel. Oh, that's one of the new ones with the texturing. Ooh. I mean, I get it, guys. It's a $2,000 knife. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, I, I collect Herman knives. Um, so I get it. Now, uh, if you're gonna, if you're, if you're just, if you're going entry level, Herman, buy one of the basic ones, right? Uh, these are, um, it's kind of the same idea as some of the companies I was talking about before, but these are made in Poland, right? So you, you definitely can't compare with a Chinese product, but they're also superior, in my opinion. This is a superior build quality. You're talking about uh, Shurogorov level execution. Um, for, in my opinion, still a competitive price tag. These are wonderful knives, but you have to be, you know, this isn't like a, you know, people don't jump from the $100 tier to the $850 tier. You climb up so that you understand specifically what it is that each company in between or the companies that you experience at various price points are bringing to the table in terms of execution. A lot of it is felt and experienced. It's not something that you see on a retail website, right? Um, it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it, a lot of it is kind of hard to understand until you get it in hand. There's a great one right here. This is an interesting, um, one because only recently has Hinderer started combining the stonewashed blades with the working finished frames. That's actually not something that was commonly done before maybe the last year or so. So in this case, we have a red G10 front scale working finished titanium lock side with a stone washed blade, XM24 hollow grind, and S45VN, which is, if I was gonna buy one right now, I gotta be, I, I gotta be honest, I am tempted. If I was gonna buy one right now, that would be it. That is very cool. Tactile Knife Company, Bexar, Bexar, kinda neat. Uh, Benchmade Mini Tag It Out. Uh. The only, like, it's crazy that this is the only Benchmade I've seen recently that's even getting remotely close to kind of reasonable. But in order to get there, it's got to be CPM 154 and Grivery. And it's got to be a 7-inch knife. Like, just can't. 
Bowie Auto sitting there. That's about that. I, I love the stitch. This is the ugliest combination I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, God. I don't like that. So somebody out there, that's their dream knife. But I, that's, I, I do not like how that looks. Uh, some custom Protex. Definitely cool. What else we got here? Small Sabenza 31. We have... Nope, 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 nope. Nothing here that I'm interested in. And actually, I've seen these. We're back to where we've seen. So real quick, I want to go to, let's go back to the homepage and look at uh, restocks real quick. Let's just see what they've got. Why do they have these listed under restock? That's so weird. Oh, they got the little, the XOUs. Okay, so if you've been looking for an XOU, there's some uh, of the, the weird colored ones um, at uh, DLT right now. Uh, so that's what, oh, they got even more. So yeah, there's actually a ton of choices. Uh, XOM and LMAX. They got a bunch of XOMs and titanium. Tons of them, tons of them. Uh, if you've been looking for one there. Kershaw Livewire and Carbon Fiber. They got the 0562 in uh, Magna Cut and Micarta. That's cool. The Bodacious, if you really want it. Which, on the subject of the Bodacious, again, the knife is honestly excellent. It's the price tag that sucks. So, you know, if you're new and you're you're doing a lot of parroting to fit in, I get it. You know, when I was brand new, when anybody who's new to a community, oftentimes what happens is you parrot. You you hear something and you take the general message and you just repeat it, right? Uh, so I don't want people getting into this trend of saying the tenacious is bad. I'm sorry, not the tenacious, the bodacious. No, it's not bad. It's a great knife. The price sucks. It should be a hundred dollars less. Should be the same price as the Manix 2, whatever that is, right? So it's okay to try to you don't you don't have to impress anybody by parroting a lot of this information. Some people who have been involved in the knife world for a long time are gonna parrot that, you know, without thinking about what they're saying. What I'm saying is be sure to add context so you don't send the wrong idea to people who are newer and don't understand entirely what they're looking at here. Is there anything else that's worth highlighting? No, not really. Uh, what's the price of the AFO? Is the AFO still a thing? Oh my gosh. 270? Still 154 CM. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Cool stuff. Cool stuff for sure. Um, that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I will link these pages down in the description. You guys can check them out if you want to. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.